your steps are just there for the first time. But if you go there several times, this is just, uh, you know, friction that is useless. And uh, so there's a bunch of little comments. Probably they were already captured in uh, GitHub issues in the past. So my, my point here is that, uh, so maybe to tell you what I went through. Actually, I was very intrigued by the simulator. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, I must admit that uh, it's just that probably I was uh, feeling bad because uh, the first time I played with it, I was uh, only destroying worlds and uh, seeing uh, this landscape of desolation in front of me. And I was seeing you guys bragging about uh, doing scores like 900 or whatnot. And uh, <laughs> so I guess I took it a bit personally, but that's good because this is what forced me to try again and again. And I started to uh, put things in a spreadsheet and see how I could actually at least go over 500 and uh, score one positive outcome for humanity. Uh, so I, I did that. And uh, uh, at some point, I start to reflect to wh why I was doing this, apart from, you know, making a point of not being a total loser, but uh, what I could actually, what I'm supposed to gain uh, from it as an educational uh, exercise. And if I could, if, if it could help me to d design better, at least in the design space of the simulator, I try to, you know, learn it. Uh, about it so that I can position a set parameters in a better way, but a way that I can understand, not just randomly. And uh, uh, the, the net result is I could not. So I've been able at some point to find some clusters of parameters that would get me above 700. Yeah, that's on my max. But uh, even doing that was a bit frustrating because I could not understand why. And uh, I could see that there were other type of clusters, but they were to be discovered randomly, like by brute force, rather than learning through the system. And that, that's really the core of my feedback. If it's a, an educational tool uh, that is more than just, hey, look at, you know, this type of... Uh, settings and at the end you have a score and it's important to to know that by changing some uh, by slight using slight variations of, of parameters you can get a completely different scores apart from learning about this principle uh what is the use of the simulation as a as a tool if it cannot get you to understand better what you're doing so that that's really my uh, the, the core of my rant so to speak. Can I respond first? Uh, yeah, thanks, a lot for the, thank, thanks a lot for the feedback. Uh, one of the things um, that we, or I mean, I struggled as well uh, while designing this was um, how can we like in, in, a, in a seamless way um, teach a person uh, or like, you know, provide them this, this um, learning experience of all the things that you mentioned right now. But like, w I think like um, the users that are coming to the simulator um, should have some knowledge beforehand of, of all these parameters. It's, it's quite hard to fit everything within this small game or you know, this sequence. Um, and we did provide you know, context and the content and what, you, what each um, parameter is, is for and stuff like that. But like, <clears throat> I'm not sure that we can expect a noob or someone who does not know um, at least something about the parameters uh, to teach them everything through the use of the simulator. Um, so, so I guess like we expect that, that people, and that's the reason why we also created uh, and wrote this blog post so that we can bring more um, information, what these parameters are, are for and how, you know, how to use them um, and then like play around with them uh, just like as you did. Um, so I think, I think we did as much as possible there. However, uh, what I'm hearing from you is like, what maybe like when you're setting some of the parameters to get some, um, system feedback on what are you currently doing and what does this all affect, 
maybe does this affect other parameters later on, you know? And to get that system feedback on the screen somehow, like you know, if you move a slider, oh, like don't move it too far away because like then you're doing this stuff and, and it will affect the other stuff, you know? But if you look at the whole sequence of like adding those parameters as steps, uh, because like they're all interconnected. If if we tell the user at the first step, uh, you know, um, I don't know, your hatch tribute is too high, and then you're affecting something that you're actually going to learn about at the at the fifth step, step further down. It gets you know it's it's even more friction for the user, right? It's a lot of information to uh, to digest, right? And so I think we we kind of expected people who uh, will be playing the simulator to have some knowledge beforehand. Yeah, okay. Can I answer that? Yeah. Um, so first of all, um, to that respect, uh, in, that, in that respect, uh, the blog posts were useful. I mean, the first one was, uh, I think it was the, the, the first blog post. I'm not completely sure, but I definitely read about the fact that uh, there were parameters that were uh, interesting for the initial settings, but uh, were not uh, actually um, impacting the, the final outcome. Uh, and uh, so actually it helped me because I, start, I stopped playing with those and, and concentrate on the other ones. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, something that concretely helped me to change my behavior regarding the, the parameters. But I'm not, um, I, I actually, I had, uh, I think maybe I'm wrong, but I had uh, some reasonable understanding of the parameters. Uh, so the point was not about, uh, you know, having absolutely no idea of what they were, but more like uh, what you said regarding the, the feedback loop. Uh, how can I go through it and understand that I should go maybe more toward this or that and, and this is what I'm calling random choices because each time I was doing it, I was instead of, I was, I could only explore in a systematic manner, a few parameters rather than uh, having some intelligent behavior that, you know, and that, that, that was how I started to doubt that actually I could use it to improve myself in the, this uh, exercise. Um, at some point, I thought, well, maybe it's just too complex. And it, it just, the, I, I started to think uh, in another way. I started to, to think that, well, this is why there is CatCat, actually. Uh, this is just about optimizing a set of complex uh, configuration that cannot be grasped by, uh, you know, cognitive capabilities of, of, of a brain. And so I shouldn't even try, but then why would I go through the simulation at all? Maybe the best would say, hey, I want to have the optimized configuration for 25 hatchers and, uh, uh, you know, this and that parameters, give, give, give them to me and I'll take it because that's what you're good at and I, that's what I'm bad at. But if, if I have myself to simulate, like, you know, playing the, 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 the different parameters, then I expect to get something out of it in terms of understanding. So actually, that's really funny because that's so, that was sort of the, the goal was for people to come out of that being like, why am I guessing these things? I should just use CAD-CAD. <laughs> that, was, that was actually I, okay, and, so you, I was, I was, you, the, I, you know I, you, you could just tell that to me and I will trust you <laughs> <laughs> well what I was hoping though is that someone would actually grab CAD CAD grab our simulations and do the run run some parameter sweeps or whatever they do with CAD CAD and then boom have the perfect score and just like click the button right and because yeah. you could totally do that I, I think the, the education that we were going for was less about like how to choose the parameters and more about like this frame of mind of like, like in the story, you know, it's like the community is choosing these parameters and that the person who has CAD CAD is not the one actually choosing the parameters, but the, the community is, right? And they're actually like 
debating these these parameters like they would debate any other policies that a community would would impose on themselves and then uh also education around like introducing the parameters of cad cad or sorry of conviction voting but not necessarily like oh yeah here's a tool for simulating the real things now we're building that we're building that next step but this is like this was i think you were you're more advanced than we expected our users to be because like you actually are a token engineer like you design you support yeah i guess maybe i am in the gap of death because yeah i'm either a bit too advanced and a bit not less i'm not advanced enough to actually as uh, do as you said and grab CatCat and actually uh, have it do the do the stuff. So I, I think I think Phil I think you're a perfect uh, target audience and the perfect user to test this uh, just because like you have enough enough um, knowledge about how the stuff works, but also you can just like put that aside and just like um, be a person who's just exploring and like you know observing this. So <clears throat> I, I think that's um, your uh, our best target audience when it comes to that. So I really appreciate you your deep dive into this and providing our feedback. And I would definitely love you to be also part of like uh, um, a, a UX uh, QA person kind of thing when we build a second stuff, a second um, a leap to. Um, but just to come back to your. Uh, comments previously I was like there are two things I was also struggling with the very same thing that you mentioned and that is like getting uh, system feedback to the user how to explain them better what they're doing and how does this affect the other stuff and and you know educate them more on on, on those parameters and all that and all that stuff I was really struggling with that just because like we're taking this like linear uh, flow of, of setting those parameters and information and also you mentioned, uh, Griff, you mentioned like it's, it's part of the story where you as a community uh, choose those parameters and debate and stuff like that. And due, due to some like, let's say, um, lack of resources or maybe technical um, implementation or whatever, we, I, I don't think like we brought over that story um, really like in the best possible way. We tried as much as possible. It should have been... Um, maybe told better maybe had a video maybe had animations maybe be like a real game kind of thing you know um where where just like you know you get like introduction to the game and you really um get the story through the intro and then really play the game so through because of the lack of, of resources we did the best we could uh, to bring over that story and I, I, I we i think we succeeded in that way um for those facts and constraints, but it could definitely could have been better. So um, for Leap2, I would love to be able <laughs> to, to have more resources and more time to build a real game, uh, to uh, bring over the story and messaging um, better. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I am, there's not much to add to that, except that, um, I think that there was already a lot of uh, welcoming material uh, ex and explanations. Uh, and there's the whole, you know, narrative around it. And uh, it's kind of, it's anticing, it's interesting. Uh, it raised interest. So there is only one thing that I'm pointing at, which is what stance can I make out of this while going through it so that I'm better on the next iteration? And I, if I can summarize my point, it's that. How can mm -hmm. I give anything that makes me better once I went through one iteration and second one and the third one? And back to what uh, Griff also was saying, uh, and you just mentioned regarding the collective uh, design, uh, it's even, a, more important in a collective uh, configuration. Uh, if I had to participate uh, to uh, the, 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 you know, a conversation around these options with a group, uh, regard or similar options, uh, well, maybe that was not the objective of the simulation. I don't know, but I wouldn't know how to engage and to 
I, I, at this point, I'm still stuck with either. Well, I think, you know, because I don't know, my gut feeling is that probably it's better to have uh, 50 people at the beginning than 25 or large number, but not too big neither. You know, this kind of uh, uh, weekly uh, uh, argumented uh, uh, reasons, but this kind of gut feeling or, okay, let's, let's try to give CatCAD uh, to feed it with some kind of input and see and guys, they will tell us, the, the machine will give us the, the right answer. And uh, uh, if uh, there is something that could make uh, the collective process augmented uh, and uh, better, thanks to uh, the input of CatCat, that would be the graal. That would be the ideal. I just don't know how it can be done with what I've seen, with my very limited view of uh, what I've seen uh, uh, of uh, CatCAD and uh, of the, um, the simulation. Does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the, the dream here is like computer-aided governance, not necessarily like computer-driven government, like, hey, computer, tell us what to do, but more like, okay, computer, the community says we should do like one of these three options, like run 10 million scenario, uh, scenarios, you know, with each of one of them. And let's look at the failures. So look at the worst case scenarios that fail. And then how do we prevent those? Oh, oh, look at these, this whole subset of this option had this one failure mechanism uh, that, that like 20% of the economies had like just nosedive once this happened. Okay, well, what if we just add this thing to that proposal so that those 20% don't fail, you know? Okay, well, I'll add that thing. Okay, so now we run the scenario. Oh yeah, oh, it didn't fail anymore. Okay, cool. So now that proposal has like, can stand the test, right? And then, okay, now we have these three proposals that are robust from failure, you know, then, or at least as far as our computers tell us, okay, community, which ones do you, which one do you actually want? They're all safe now, mm -hmm. you know? Like do you, which building is, you know, which building do you want to have our community center in? You know, and it's like, well, all the buildings are safe, you know, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, so, uh, but we still get to design like, you know, what we want. Okay. So th this is really uh, useful. Actually, I can picture from what you were saying, two different ways. I don't know if they are practical and they, if they can be developed, but uh, there are two ways that comes to my mind to make it better from an edu educational standpoint. So one is, let's say that I run a first simulation and I arrive at a result that is uh, uh, suboptimal. Uh, if I was presented with, okay, you made this kind of choice, but if you change this parameter or this one, you know, and uh, not just as an abstract indication, but like if you had a, a bigger exit tax, for instance, then suddenly you will be up to a much better path. So you can try it. And the best would be that it's not so good because your exit tax was too low. <laughs> I try to play with this one, you know, uh, th this kind of indication that so that you start from where you are and you can see improvement paths using this way or the, this other way. And another way that comes to mind is that, uh, let's say that you get to a good result or even you don't have a result yet, but you could start with the, the outcome. So there is a result, I don't know, 750, whatever that means, but there might be different paths to get there with different set. And uh, comparing will be immensely va valuable. If I could see, okay, I got that. I went through the exercise. I set my parameters a bit randomly and blindly, but I got some uh, acceptable result. And now the system show me, okay, you got that, but then look at similar result that could be done with different options that actually are meaningful, you know, so that actually can drive the conversation collectively. Uh, pushing in a certain direction uh, can be an ideological option. Like for instance, increasing or decreasing the uh, uh, exit tax can be a, an ideological option. 
and you may want to consider this important to you for reasons that are not related to the uh, numerical outcome, measurable outcome. But then assuming that you have that, what are the other options so that you get to a, a, a good, good, um, good result? Yeah, just uh, thinking out loud. That's, uh, that's really um, intuitive too, because this is what we experienced when we did the hatch, when we're doing the hatch design, right? There are certain parameters that are sort of inherently uh, political like uh, there's kind of the, the tribute, right? We have the, the hatch tribute, which is like when you donate, when you, when you, it's not donating, but when you send money to the hatch, right? A percentage of it will be set aside for the collective uh, to decide on. And then the other set of it, uh, the other set of money, like let's say the hatch tribute is 10%. 10% of all the funds sent there will be only governed by the collective. And then 90% will be able to be rage quit out you know so it's similar mm -hmm. to the bonding curve and funding pool but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so now this becomes a political thing where it's like well almost akin to like libertarian versus socialist right like if, yes. if you have a high hatch tribute then you know the the individuals are held accountable to the collective and if you have a low hatch tribute then the collective is held accountable to the individuals right like the the people who put money in, they're kind of stuck there. If the collective wants to go in a, a direction they don't want to go, it would cost a lot to rage quit if there's a high hatch tribute. Mm -hmm. If there's a low hatch tribute, then it uh, then you could rage quit really easily. So the collective shouldn't want to go piss off too many individuals. So all of a sudden, this became very political. It's not even about the numbers. It's just straight about this, like, this philosophy of which philosophy is better. And we were memeing it. It was like, it was a scene, man. It was really fun, actually. Uh, and people were like, hi, people would fork proposals and just be like, I made a high hatch tribute, you know? Mm -hmm. This proposal is great, except for the hatch tribute. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have another comment, which is uh, uh, more about some weird edge case uh, that I uh, stumbled upon. So that had nothing to do with the simulation itself, but more with the model. I, uh, so I mentioned it briefly. Uh, and the, the was that uh, in a couple of occasion, uh, so I have the numbers and um, I, can, I can't give that to you, but I, 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 I uh, by changing one unit, in one particular uh, parameters, I got totally different catastrophic scenario. And uh, like uh, minus 250 points, like, uh, you know, it's really bad. And just by one, it's, I don't know if it was the number of days of the proposal or something like that. And then if I increase it uh, around this pivotal uh, value, it's okay. Just one, be one above and one under, it's, it's a disaster. So I guess that it's just an aberration. It's, it cannot be real. <laughs> I, Victor, I don't want to think it's real. Vitor, do you have anything to say on that one? Like how one small change could have like a huge effect on the score? Yeah, like uh, we were simulating 1,095 days. So like imagine we have some feedback loops that go over and over like a, a thousand and ninety five days so things might my my get really different. So I think like that was one, one of the points that you can play with and you can see like how you're changing small things you can have like really different results and have some randomness in there. So like in a normal KKI workflow you would uh, run like uh, several Monte Carlo runs. So like you get the same parameters and you rerun it like a hundred times, thousand times. So you can see many edge cases, but in this case, like you're seeing just one, 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 one scenario. So like, I think the idea is to illustrate that even if you change small things, like you can have really different outputs. So the whole idea is that you don't have a like linear, uh, linear cause and effect uh, for each parameter, like separate. And then like, if you change a few of them, 
they might work well together, but if you have another set of parameters, other combination is good. So uh, I think that was the, the idea. But yeah, like you end up having some constraints in the implementation. So it's like not a real world uh, model for many reasons, like you need infinite complexity to, to model it, etc. So I imagine that you have like some constraints in execution time and et cetera. So, but the, the, the main idea is that, that uh, uh, in a real world scenario, you run like many times the same, the same like parameters and see how random is affected. And since it's like a long time period, if you so change what you're saying things, is that if you were adding, because there was no randomness, right? I, I, in the sense that uh, if I enter the same parameters again and again, I get the same outcome in this yeah. particular simulation. So, but what you're saying is that little aberrations would be kind of balanced and smooth if you were running uh, on top of the actual and current calculation, some randomness, uh, inject injecting some randomness to the system that's more akin to real life. That's what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, because we are actually injecting randomness, but oh. we're using the same random seed just for simplicity. So like you can compare the results. And yes, okay, so, okay. Yeah, you have a specific random oh, seed there. There is arbitrary. Yeah, that's because we could just take it out and then like if you run your model like a hundred times, you get a hundred different, like slightly different results or more extreme results. So like you, we kind of have this injection of, of uh, randomness, but you just get one case all the time. So this is one point. So this might be what, why this is happening. Okay. It's like deterministic randomness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the the other big piece is that if you ran the simulation 10,000 times and somehow averaged the scores, then you could probably get more of the results that you would expect. But we're running just one simulation, which is like kind of crazy, honestly. You'd never use CADCAD to just do one simulation. Or I mean, it was a little overkill to use CADCAD to just do one simulation. Um, but so, yeah, it's... Uh, I will say like, you know, this is a lot better than the first common stack simulation of the bonding curve, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever saw that. That was really bad. That was like JavaScript and we're like, oh yeah, make the price go up at the beginning and then go down. <laughs> and we just, you know, and so this is the next step where it's like, okay, we're really using CatCat on the front end, but it's still really, I mean, this is the, I don't know of very many other front ends that use CADCAD on the back end. There's like a couple, but they're not nearly this pretty, that's for sure. Uh, but they're more real, you know, they're more real. And so this is like a step and I hope that, uh, hope that we can do better in the next steps uh, around this game. And, but especially for the real like commons simulator, which we're just starting to work on now. And uh, well, we have the hatch dashboard. That was kind of the next step in the common simulator like vibe. Uh, and we learned a lot. And now we're going to do, and now we're in the engineering phase of the final common simulator. So, uh, or the first round of the, of the real common simulator. But just on topic, on top of the, on the technical stuff for the CAD CAD, uh, a repository, like our backend repository, I think this is the one that created the issue. It's like, like well documented and you can just like if you're up to and want to like play with cat cat or something like that uh you can just like just clone it and there are like the comments for like running in your cell i so you can like run it uh, on your computer just the back end and in there you can like take out the randomness for example and run it like with many like run it a thousand hundred times and stuff like that so you can like we you have the model and then we're using one, one configuration for the front end but then you can just take it out and play with it in any way you want like to, to test things out in a more systematic way like that's a nice approach as well if i like go deep in that it just takes a little time to run because it's happy but otherwise it's fun well thank you and uh yeah and uh i'll be happy to i mean actually i'm interested to try uh to be a co cobaya, as you say, 
um, how do you call cobai? You know the little animal that uh, are using for tests in labs. Guinea pig. Yeah, that thing. So yeah. for for the next version, yeah. Uh, that's cool. Well, do you want to be a guinea pig on our uh, next blog post? Uh, and just that's what we're going to spend the last twenty minutes on uh, is just kind of reading over the last blog post. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, early. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Vitor. No, I just think that I think you're gonna like more this one because the first two one were more like introductory and they were more like showing the initialization. And this one it shows like all the policies that you run and it kind of shows a little bit more of the cause and effect. So I think more be this might help with the like the harder things to grasp in the in the front end. Cool. Yeah, and I made a bunch of GitHub issues off of your comment, like basically this whole time I was making GitHub issues. So the, they're recorded and we'll, when we go into more active development on the game, we will definitely have all of this in mind. So thank you so much, Phil, for bringing that. Actually, well, thank you guys. I also saw Marco for a second there. He was going like this, but he never got to say anything. I don't know, Marco, if you had something you wanted to say. No, okay. Sorry, Okay, Phil, I... oh, that's the link. Yeah, okay. So I'll let you work and I'll have a look and maybe uh, if I have any feedback, send them to you. But... Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, I think we're just going to collectively hang out in this thing, in this chat room and uh, and review this doc right now. So you're welcome to stay also. Okay, I'll stay a little bit. I have to go, not too long, but I'll, I'll stay to capture the mood. Same. Well, Lauren, do you have any, do you want to introduce us or to this, to this doc? Yeah, so I just shared the link in the chat there. Um, I think it's pretty good. Like when we talk about the mechanisms and like go in order, it needs more memes. So also if you're reading through and you're like, this could be memes, it'd be great, especially like for a few of the mechanisms in the middle. Um, yeah. Yes. Would you like any more of an intro? No, it's great. Okay, great. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, you can just like, just go in and hack. And Phil, if there's anything that you want, I, everyone else knows this, but you can just edit straight in the doc. Um, just set, set your, set it to suggestion mode and Feel free to go wild.
Hey, Mitor. How does the median affinity affect um, whether or not more proposals are generated? Like, I don't, I don't, I, I gotta check the code because I don't remember right now. Oh, okay, cool. I'll so need that things. question and I'm like, I actually have no idea. Yeah, well, let me check. It is uh, like the, the median affinity uh, is used when uh, a participant wants to create a proposal. So he's more prone to create more proposals if he has more affinity and if the network adds itself like has more affinity between like the participants and the proposals. Wait, wait, so... Um... Uh, a participant that has like a higher average affinity for all proposals, like an affinity that's higher than the median for no, everything. No, no, no. You, you get the median affinity of the whole network. Like if the, if people, because like you, you people might have a, a higher or low affinity, uh, like in general. But if you have more affinity, if you have like you know, because we have a distribution or we have like a lot of people with small affinity with the network and uh, two people with higher affinity. So if we have like a median that is higher, then people are more like, they care more about the proposals and people are more prone to create more proposals. So this is an uh, individual point of view. Like oh, the participant okay. see that there is more affinity then he, he's like has more probability to create more proposals, to create a proposal. Okay, so it's just like in general, if the median affinity is higher for all proposals for everybody, then it's just like more likely that anybody in the comments will create proposals. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, guys, uh, I have to run to the next one. Uh, and I assume many of you also have a new call that starts here. This is awesome. Uh, dude, this. I think this is a really cool blog post. I agree that it needs some more memes though. I tried to make some and then I wasn't happy with them, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, but so yeah, if anyone sees a meme or sees something that's memeable, it sounds like that's really good and great comments in here. Obviously, um, we can keep reviewing it uh, async.
Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And thank, thank you, you so much for all your feedback, Phil. It's so great to have you here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Phil. How are you doing? I'll go to the end of the article. It's really cool. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.